Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm glad you could tune in today. My name is Cassie and you're watching The Victorian Thimble. Today, we're gonna review a sewing book. And the sewing book of choice is this new gift that I got, Embellishments Constructing Victorian Detail. Let's take a look. So what we're gonna to review today is a book called Embellishments, Constructing Victorian Detail by Estrada Schaefer. It's a beautiful little book. This was part of a gift that I did get on my big benchmark birthday. If you saw my most recent video that I posted, um, there is a section in there that asks you to guess my age. So I'm not actually revealing the age of that birthday just yet. That will come soon, but this was one of the beautiful gifts that I did get for my birthday. And I thought it would be nice to share it with you because in sharing this with you, um, that way if you're interested in buying the book too, would maybe just save you some steps because you would have an idea if it's something that you want. So this again today guys is pretty much like a one take wonder video. I'm just gonna sit here and chat for a few minutes and however it goes, I'm just putting it up and sharing with you because I've just had so many projects on the go and I just wanted to touch base with you guys, let you know what I'm up to and share this book with you. So all in all, my vacation was good. I had a nice time off. I actually did a lot of sewing projects and then there was a lot of other things that I did as well. Um, and you know how it goes before you know it, your vacation time's done and it's time to go back to work. So anyways, um, that being said, I did get lots of video footage to share with you guys, but it's gonna take some time before it all comes out. So in the interim, let's take a look at this book. So this book here um, was a birthday gift. It's got a nice um, like satin touch type cover to it, which I love those, those are so amazing. And if you're interested in buying this book for any reason, um, the heart of the book is that the author wanted to um, introduce people to the Victorian trims, both self-made things you can purchase, just that whole aesthetic, and introduce to people possibilities of way they could work this into their modern clothing that they're making, as well as if you're using something like this for costuming or you know any sort of reenactment work or anything like that, this would also be good. It's also just a great educational tool as well. So anyways, let's take a look at the book here, um, Constructing Victorian Detail. It does have some of the usual things. So here, I'll just hold up for you to see in case you're interested, table of contents, and then page two of the table of contents. So if you're the type of person that likes to see what's in the book by the table of contents, you could just push the pause button on the video and you would be able to take a look at that, okay? So now we're just gonna take a quick look through the book here. Um, by the way, before we go into that, I will just show you guys here that the book is organized into different chapters and I'm not gonna hold that up again. Um, you could back it up if you wanna see. But we do take a look at self-trim. Among self-trim, we cover color contrast, texture contrast, layering elements, and asymmetry. Then there's an entire chapter on ruching, different sizes, different ways, different applications. Then there's pleats, knife pleats, box pleats, pleats combinations, sculptural pleats, like lots of different kinds of pleats that can be manufactured. After that, we take a look at ribbon work. Among ribbon work is uh, making Parisian fronds. And then there's also pleated or ruched fronds. Then chapter five covers bound edges. And this is all about um, making bias hemming and things like that. And then we take a look at piping, basic piping, piping designs, all that sort of information. Um, sorry, let me try that again. Then we take a look at piping and they've got a nice little section in here where the piping, let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. So with the piping, look at this. Isn't that smart that they just, that, that's just a couple of different colors of piping and it creates so much texture and detail in a garment by doing that. After piping, we do take a look at cord and braid work and they do explain um, how a lot of the time Victorian ladies would get 
um, designs out of the magazines that would be published during the time, such as the Godie's publication, and they would be able to trace those out and reproduce them on their own garments at home. So women in the Victorian era often relied heavily on magazines and stuff for the lookbooks, for the fashion plates, and they would figure out, um, sometimes they're getting patterns or purchasing patterns, and other times they're figuring out how to add these elements to their own designs on their own. And once again, this is where a book like this comes handy, is if you know how to make the various types of trims, then if you're looking at a fashion plate, chances are you have a, like a pattern that you can use and work with and you would figure out how to add these sorts of trims to the garment you're using and just make it all the more beautiful. So after that, we do cover applique as well, where it's showing you self-applique or could be contrasting, but in the book they show a self-applique where it's the same as the fabric and the stitching shows the outline. And then finally, there's this um, subject called passementery, if I'm saying it right, which is, um, that's um, things that are not ribbon, lace, or self-trim, or piping, or braiding. It's uh, like tassels, beads, all those little embellishments that you may add to an outfit, but they don't really fit any of the other categories. They're called passementry, if I'm saying it correct. So now let's just uh, take a look here. I'm just gonna flip you through a few pages of the book. I'll just show you, like a lookbook, some of the beautiful pictures. Um, let me see. I'll hold up this one for you to see as well. You can see some of the beautiful trim work that is on there. Here's another gorgeous outfit. Let's see if I could find you a couple more here. That one looks too much like the other. Here's another beautiful dress full of self trim, a red wool dress. Look at all the details and embellishments that are added on to that, right? And so this is where, honestly guys, like any of the things you're seeing in this book, this book is basically showing you how you can recreate these trims and put them on to your own designs yourself. Check this one out. Look at the detail of this, um, the sleeve there, right? Really, really nice. Um, here's another, oh, we got a couple more we could show you guys here. Check out the back of this gown. Just beautiful detail. You've got, uh, you've got a combination here going on of pleats, piping in a contrasting color, passementery, the, uh, the tassels, and uh, then of course you have all your sewing that's going on around it. I can also see like a knife pleated collar going on up here as well. And so you can see how what could have been um, a pretty ordinary piece of clothing becomes pretty extraordinary by the use of trims and embellishments. We'll just take a look at a couple more of these for you before we call it a day. Here's another really pretty design for you to look at. And once again, the, the outfits are, they're just, they're so beautiful guys. They're so beautiful and um, Here's an example of like some cord and braid work. You can see how a woman would have worked that into an outfit. You got some examples close up here. Um, and let's see, this one was a wedding suit in the year 1909. And again, look at all the fancy work on that so beautiful and that's all like basically uh trim work that's yeah cording right so pretty so so pretty and then here was another really nice one check out this keystone style jacket here now what's really cool about that is i will show you on the next page this was highlighting applique work that i was talking about where it's the same as the fabric you cut out the design you attach it to the outfit use contrasting thread and look at the sort of thing that you can produce. Right, like it just puts so much detail into the outfit and it gives it texture and it's so pretty. Um, yeah, so anyways, past that, um, you know, we got a few other embellishments. This um, is full of passementerie. 
That outfit's actually a pretty interesting one when you read the book because they talk about how there's a clever use of fabric only in the shown areas and then other areas that are under the jacket and stuff, they use plainer, more serviceable fabric that isn't as expensive. And it just shows you that uh, people were always economizing, whether it's today or 150 years ago. Um, yeah, so anyways, one more thing I thought I'd share with you. These are some exhibition views of this, uh, of these garments and things. So you can find that at the back of the book and then about the author herself. All right, so there it is, guys. Um, I've never really done a book review quite like this before, so I don't know. Um, anyways, hopefully this gave you some of the information you're looking for. If you were to ask me, would I buy the book? Because it was a gift, I didn't pay for it, but yes, I would buy this book. It's got wonderful details in it, great directions. It's straightforward and easy to follow wonderful lookbook pictures, it's inspiring to use. All in all, it's a really great book. So uh, there we go, I just want to share that with you. Thanks so much for uh, checking in with me this week and just seeing what we're up to here at the Victorian Thimble. There are more projects and exciting things to come in the weeks to come and I am doing every effort to post every Sunday for you so that we can stay in touch here at the Victorian Thimble. So thanks again for watching this week. I'll see you next week with your needle and thread at the Victorian Thimble. Take care guys. Bye.